morning. Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Blast off in your ear. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Have a special guest in the building this morning. This man about to have the number one album in the damn country. Independent. Independent. Why not? Tyrese. <laughs> Why right, so not? Let's get right into it. You got a number one country, but I mean the number one album, but this is your last album. Why? Um, well, y'all know I went through a real nasty public and private custody situation fighting for more custody of my baby. So mm-hmm. I landed 50 50 joining and in, in legal custody. Shout out to all the fathers out there still mm-hmm. determined to get that time in. And so you can't have that much custody and then say, I'll be home in six months. I got to go chase a music career. So, right. you know, um, pickups and drop offs is real for me. Uh, bedtime stories and mm-hmm. helping her with her homework. That's all real for me. So I had to, I got to do what I got to do. I love music. I'm never going to Stop doing music as a whole because it's my first love, but it's definitely my last album. It's not Is a publicity it? stunt to get everybody excited, like, go run go Grand Tyree's last it. album. It's the last <laughs> time you're going to get it. No, it's not. This is it for real. This is it. Did your daughter it took enjoy me go- three and a half years to do this album. Like, e- emotionally, mm-hmm. it wiped me out. Like, I'm fighting for more custody. Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for five years on the low. and um, Living together and everything. Envy, envy knows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh... Envy's wife used to talk to my girl. They were cool. And it um, ended, though. Yeah. So it, can your wife still talk to her? Are they still friends, or does that friendship end? My, my wife's loyalty is to Tyrese. Okay. I'm and married women shouldn't talk to single women. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. That conversation can get a little... T- so why are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awkward, though, because if they formed a friendship, shouldn't she still be able to talk to her? I mean, My I mean, wife's loyalty is to Tyrese. Okay, let, yeah, let's move on. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So five years, you know, I did some things that I was ashamed of. You know, nobody, we're all a work in progress. And um, and so that's where the inspiration behind the song Shame came from. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not for perfect people. It's not for people that think they so far up the spiritual ladder, they don't make mistakes. Um, it's a song about being honest and transparent and vulnerable. So for it to be number two on Billboard right now in only six weeks... It's just a confirmation that when you do things from your heart, it affects heart. So, and it um, is a video, actually, that really matters. Because I feel like a lot of videos nowadays aren't really so important. But I think it really helps with the song as well, the visual that went along with did it. Did you pay Denzel? No. Denzel did it for the love? Denzel believe in this. It's actually a short film. Uh-huh. So that's 25 minutes long. And Denzel is definitely on board. I mean, I got phone calls about edits and... You know, it's it's like he's very involved. He's like, yo, keep sending me the links with the updated scenes, and I think you should this and that. I mean, them calls were very uncomfortable because you don't want to disappoint D. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? But Did you call him or he called you? How that work? Yeah, I called him. And uh, also the, the casting person named Robbie Reed, who did Malcolm X with him and a bunch of other movies, got Denzel on board as well. So Denzel must be in between movies. He's doing videos. He can... Well, it's a movie. It's a okay, short film. You, you, you know what I mean? So they're... they're the condensed version of the shame video is about six and a half minutes long, but the short film in itself is 25 minutes long, starring myself and Jennifer Hudson, directed by Paul Hunter. I'm not gonna lie, when they said, when I found out that you had the number one album in the country, I said, boy, they letting the wrong person be number one independent. No, in that's the not right. <laughs> I said, that's the last person. No, you, want you to be should be happy, one. man. I am happy. I'm keeping but dark I, skin on, I'm baby. I'm happy, but I'm like, you know. Man. About to show his ass now. Yeah, you know, we darker than this mic, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to stay on. We're trying to take Envy out. And, 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 <laughs> and Charlamagne now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm back, baby. You are getting brighter and brighter every time I say it. But we'll talk about that later. I was like, this. Envy? I mean, Charlamagne? <laughs> now, now you, you caught some flack because you, you used a dead homeless woman to promote that. Dead homeless. Was she dead? She was not dead. Why did you call her dead? Homeless. Homeless. What are you talking about? When Tyrese man? was like, y'all sleeping on R&B and the homeless lady just <laughs> She was sleeping. She was not dead. <laughs> she was not dead. <laughs> but people were upset about that. No, they was upset. Listen, let me just say this. I apologize for what, what seems like it was insensitive and going too far. Um, I didn't really think about that before I did it. You know what I mean? I just was trying to make a point. Mm-hmm. And the point is, right now... The state of R&B is dead. Most R&B singers are not conscious of it, but a lot of us are insecure, and we feel like our songs don't get attention, don't get no love on radio, 
don't have any fans buying it anymore unless we got 15 rappers on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The state of R&B is insecure. So I just want to apologize to everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't have 15 rappers on my album. For this Black Rose album to be number one in 15 countries and it's straight R&B, period, it's sending the right message. It's making a statement that the fans are still out here. They want to support. They want to show up. You know what I mean? Like for me, in my mind, it was never Marvin Gaye featuring Curtis Blow. It was never Luther Vandross featuring Run DMC. It mm -hmm. was never Donny Hathaway featuring Sugar Hill Gang. It was pure R&B soul. No gimmicks. I ain't name dropping. Produced by Pharrell. Mm -hmm. Produced by, listen, it's pure R&B, period. So for it to be number one on R&B charts and the top 200 with my album, it's a confirmation that R&B is turning that corner. Hey, and I think you should have just caught yourself buying a lady something to eat. If you just put it on camera buying a homeless lady something well, to no, eat. Well, no, here's the thing. Cool. I was just making a statement. I didn't know she was homeless. She just looked like she was taking a nap. She was passed out. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, now people are like, oh, you taking advantage. The woman is homeless. I didn't know she was homeless. Yeah. I it thought was supposed she to was, be like a, a look, metaphor. Look, it was a shaded area. There was mm -hmm. other people sleeping in the area. Mm -hmm. It was not necessarily a homeless area. And I was like, she's taking a nap. So right. guess what? I want to make a point. I feel like people are sleeping on R&B. Right. That was the only point. It wasn't about taking advantage of nothing. That's not what I do. Absolutely. Right. So I apologize for anybody that I made feel a certain kind of way because of that moment. And if I ran into the woman, I put a couple hundred dollars under. Mm -hmm. But if there's anybody else that, you know, want to come at me about it, just come see me in the streets, homie. Okay. I'm just playing. <laughs> you see my nose flare? Come see me, homie. Now you're on the train and you're promoting the album on the train. Well, why'd you do that? What was the idea behind that? Okay, so let me just tell you what really happened. Mm -hmm. I've never told nobody this. Okay. I was running late to a live hit to do a radio interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, TV interview. Okay. It was actually with Roxy from, you know, used to be on 106. Yeah, okay. Shout out to Roxy. She on HLN. Yep. And I had a live hit that I couldn't miss. So the driver said, we're going to get there about an hour and 20 minutes with this traffic. Y'all know New train. York traffic. Right. I said, yo, we got to go take the train. Okay. Yo. So we ended up taking three trains. We went through Brooklyn. We did what we had to do. And uh, that's when the moment happened. There you go. See, and that's so, why I tell Envy to take the train all the time because it's way faster than driving. Sometimes, traffic. yeah. Sometimes I have to though. Every once in a while. But then Brandy Envy's not. The train, Envy's he, not getting out of that race. No, I, I had to blue. walk him. He wants people I had to, to walk see him what's down. happening in these streets. I had to walk <laughs> him down to the subway and be like, "This is the train you have to get on." And then he called me when it was time to come back here, and I had to give him explicit directions on how to get back. Envy, you know, I know how to ride the I've train in New York. In like fifteen years, I take the train. I know how to ride the train with no help. You need yeah. help and you live here? I need help. He needed help. I had to walk out. him Absolutely. down. He's got the wraith. He's got no tents on his window. He's, no, no, no. See me. This is that radio money. You're it's right. happening in these streets. Now, Brandy tried to do the same thing. You inspired Brandy to get on the train. You inspired Brandy. It didn't work out too well for you her. You see Brandy video? No. Oh, oh man. No. Well, she Brandy. got on the video and she sang, but nobody knew who she was. She sang and she was like, I can't get one fan, not one fan. Like, you know how you caused the commotion and, you know, everything. She, no. Nah. It was not at all. It's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it, man. But, you know, I mean, listen, we all love riding the train. That's the homie, man. Somebody came up to her and gave us some advice. It was like she should sing a little better and everything. They yeah. didn't say she should sing well, better. They, the homeless if, lady if, that you gave the $100 to was on the train and gave her some advice on how to sing better. <laughs> no, Charlotte for real. Bay. <laughs> I was like, hey man, Lord, well, if that dude, whoever said that, if they knew that that was Brandy, they would give her some different advice. Trust me, because she is one of the greatest they ever do. Absolutely, she can sing and her she's on the Black Rose album, and we have a song called "The Rest of Our Lives." So shout out to Brandy. They let them talk, sh baby. It's all good. We know what's happening in these R and B streets. What's that about the rest of our lives? The rest of our lives. Yeah. Well, you know, we we said, you know what? Let's do a song that's for the first dance at a wedding. Mm. And and so it's a wedding song. Oh, that's okay. nice. I so, love wedding songs. Yeah, that's that sound that you hear me be like, that's gonna be playing at my wedding. Yeah, so absolutely. What, what's the significance of the title, Black Rose? Because it sounds kind of dark. Um, well, a rose that grew through concrete. Tupac. Tupac. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm a black rose that grew through concrete. Mm -hmm. South Central L.A. Watts. Um, lived in Watts for 19 years. I was born in Watts. So I just wanted to, to to you know, I was inspired by that poem that Pac wrote. So it's it's transparent, it's honest, it's vulnerable. 
uh, it's it's my best, it's my last. Mm-hmm. And it's one of them albums where you can press play from top to bottom and not skip one joint. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm proud of. So shout out to everybody around the world. It's number one in 13 countries. Congrats. It's my first number one R&B album on Billboard. It's number one on the top 200. I'm just like, we're celebrating because mm-hmm. instead of just mentioning statistics, mm-hmm. it's a confirmation that they say R&B fans are dead. They say nobody sells R&B albums anymore. This whole time I've been doing interviews, as you can imagine, it's like, okay, you got an R&B album. You're doing an interview. Mm-hmm. What could I say mm-hmm. that can make people do what they don't do anymore? which is buy a full R&B album that doesn't have 15 rappers on it. Mm. No antics, no perks. I'm not twerking. I ain't dropping. <laughs> I don't know nobody named Nene. Mm. I'm sorry. But it comes from a different place. See? You don't know Nene and you from, you from what? I, I, don't, I don't know nobody named Nene. <laughs> but it comes from a different place. See, most artists have to conform to the industry because they got to pay their bills. You coming from a place of doing it from the heart. You got money to pay your bills. So you can... You got a Benny Hanna's in your backyard. Exactly. Well, and a Starbucks. <laughs> But just want to throw Eddie that just out there. finished the hookah lounge, by the way. Yeah, stay out my backyard, man. <laughs> and he has I'm a car s- mine with the brick oven pizza. Oh my goodness! All I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is, R and B singers that are specifically in R and B, we've had to convert into doing house and techno. Mm-hmm. We've had to have our albums compromise with a bunch of rappers on it just to get any kind of attention and love. Mm-hmm. The fact that this album is winning and it's just R&B, mm-hmm. I feel like it's sending the right statement. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be number one just for me. I'm number one. I'm cool. The fact that it's number one, the industry is like robots. They're going to want to fall in line and and it becomes the trend. This Oh, this is what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. So all of the twerking and dropping is going to be on pause and the actual talented people that's been on the shelves, they're going to finally have their albums to see the light of day. I'm talking about past favorite R&B singers, R&B singers that are current, and the ones that have yet to be discovered. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I'm sending this as a message to radio. I had a song called Stay. Mm -hmm. Envy knows all about it. Classic record. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Stay was number one for 11 weeks on Billboard. Mm -hmm. Sam Smith had a song called Stay. Sam Smith's song had a full choir on it. Sam Smith's record was played on all formats of radio. Top 40, rhythmic, crossover. Urban. He's got an urban, right? Now, Sam Smith ain't step, step foot into any of these urban radio stations, mm. but yet urban radio is going all out supporting it. If you want a radio spin, you got to do so much radio promo is out of control. Meet and greets, interviews, you got to call in, you got to do something. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not attacking Sam Smith. I'm not competitive. This is not ego, no nothing. I'm talking about facts because you're talking about money. Now I can tell my truth. There you go. I ain't got to be politically correct. Mm -hmm. I think right now it's time to be more fair. If we showing love on urban radio to Robin Thicke, Justin Timberlake, and Sam Smith, who's singing R&B soul, and I'm a fan, Mm -hmm. then it needs to work on both sides. Don't tell me I'm number one on R&B and urban AC and urban mainstream, but yet... I'm number one for 11 weeks, but yet top 40 rhythmic and crossover stations ain't playing my music. Mm -hmm. We showing love on both sides. You got to show love on both sides. The point I'm making is don't say because you're black that only black people supposed to support you. Mm -hmm. My music has no limits. It has no sexual preference. It has no racial barriers. So if we're if they're singing R&B soul and you're being supported on urban radio, I believe it should go both ways. I agree. Don't limit my shit. Right. Because my movies ain't limited. You can't say that only black people know me and support my music because that's not true. Mm -hmm. You can't say that if you go to a Stevie Wonder concert, it's only black people in the audience because he's black. Like, there's there's a lot of different forms of racism. And guess what, y'all? Here's, this is what I want to say to pop radio. Go ahead. I'm not going to convert. There's no no house and techno version of shame coming. (laughs) I'm not going to switch it up. I'm not going to sing Shame with auto-tune in my voice just for a radio spin. But I guarantee you if I show up, the fans are going to be there. They will be excited. Period. So if if Stay by Sam Smith has a full choir on it, if I sung that version of Stay, 
my joint would have been locked into urban radio and I'd have probably been with Yolanda Adams on the gospel channel. <laughs> Spread love. Don't forget WBLS. You definitely would have got that early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man, at the end of the day, I, I'm, I'm putting this on blast. And guess what? I don't have a racist bone in my body. I'm not a homophobe. I ain't got no issues. I'm not competitive. I just want music to have an opportunity to reach his maximum audience. Right. Don't limit me because of my skin. Don't limit me because of what 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 form of radio is is, is supporting him first. Listen, they may start in pop and rhythmic radio, but if urban radio recognizes that they're singing R and B soul, we spread love. We don't say, "Oh, that's a white person. Let the white station support them." Mm-hmm. And they shouldn't be happening on the other side. I often wonder if the pop program directors are paying attention the way the urban program directors do. Because urban program directors tend to be more aware of all the music that's out there. I don't know if pop Bro, program directors they do, are. man. They do. They know. Bro, it's no way to stay was number one for 11 weeks. Right now, my song Shame is number two on Billboard. It's no way they don't see that. Featuring Jennifer Hudson. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that only black people love Jennifer Hudson. Stop playing with me. (laughs) Soon as Obama come up with any event, Jennifer is there. Soon as the Oscars do any award show, Jennifer is there. You telling me only black people at the Oscars? Man, I'm grown. Stop playing with me. Especially being, I I, I like what you said about how they make, uh, you know, black artists jump through hoops. Oh, my God. Man, can I get a radio spin? What do you want me to do? We're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Because without radio, our voices aren't heard. So at the end of the day, I ain't trying to start no shit. I'm just putting it out there. Those days is over for me. Shame is number two on Billboard, and I'm asking, uh, what's my man's name? Uh, 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 come on, give me the name. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. Seacrest. Yeah. Ryan Seacrest in the morning. It's your man, Ryan Seacrest. We about to go into Tyree Shame featuring Jennifer Hudson. Can I hear that at least one time? Or do you need Robin Thicke to sing my song in order for you to play it? <laughs> oh, <man>. Damn it, man. <laughs> Can we? Come on, man. Right. All I'm saying is, this is my last round. This is my last album. I don't want shame that's being heavily supported by urban AC and urban mainstream radio to be limited to a black man singing to only black people. Them days is over, man. Maybe, I don't think maybe you should put Vin album. Diesel on the record. I got fans named Becky. Put Vin Diesel on the record. Just have him talk on it. Huh? Just have Vin Diesel talk on it talk in the beginning. That's You've been all. doing it 20 years, man, and you're still putting out Amazing records. This shouldn't be the last album. I'm gonna tell you that. But and you like but he didn't say man. that he's not gonna do I'm any more music. Listen, he's album. not saying he's not doing any music. He's just not putting out tw- albums. It's been right? 20 years since he did the Coca Cola on the bus, man, and he's still putting out records. I got this. There's a lot of people. Well, you out know there what? That if you die uh, to make the records that you have, and die in, to be in your position right now, and you saying this is my last album. Well, you know what? Listen, you're a dad. You you got a kid? Absolutely. Okay, so you're a dad. Right. We still waiting on the homie to go ahead and shoot the club up. Let yeah. Me, <laughs> yeah. We still waiting on you to stop playing in these streets. Right. Uh, the good thing is about when you when you're hosting, you know, you always stay far away from this, so you could always be pregnant and be sick. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Let me know. I'm having baby mama auditions next week. You know, baby mama auditions. You audition. know what I'm saying? You know, you can get me right. Uh, <laughs> That's how you celebrate with a number one album? I got a number one album. I'm going to have me another baby. That's, <laughs> it. That's it. That's it. Baby mama audition. I feel like, listen, man, I just want this album and the success around this album to make a statement. And I can't say it enough. Urban or AC Radio, y'all have helped us to feed our families, pay our bills. You were able to tour. Like, at the end of the day, without radio, our music will never have an audience. It will never have no reach. I know social media is powerful and everybody's moving. But we're vulnerable, man. Every spin counts. Mm -hmm. Everything counts. So, oh, I mean, bro, I'm off an hour and a half of sleep every day. Yesterday, Mm -hmm. I had an in-store at FYE, and they called the ambulance. Somebody passed out? I almost did. Mm -hmm. In the store. I needed some oxygen. Mm -hmm. I didn't stop. I needed a quick 30-minute break. I was there off an hour and a half of sleep. I'm drinking five hours and and espresso coffee. I had to sit down for a minute. I'm sitting there, and the room started spinning. I'm like, holy sh! This ain't going too right. Mm-hmm. I needed a minute. Fully committed to the process. I wasn't gonna let the fans down. I'm like, look, I I didn't pass out, and I'm definitely not going out there to get in the ambulance and make a scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's what it is. You can't be working this hard and saying that you're doing all this. 
as an urban artist catering to the needs of urban. Right. I'm trying to do what I got to do to 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 respark R and B. Like I got my cape on, baby. I'm trying to I'm trying to right. I'm trying to fly. But now let me ask you a question. You you do records like Stay, and then you do records like Shame, and you preach positivity, and you preach being a great man and great relationships. But then you f up in your relationship. No, but he admits that he's human. Yeah, he's not not human. But Tyrese can't do that. You can't be a pastor. Are you saying that to me? Yes. Oh. Yes, I am oh. saying that. Are you, know you saying, you saying that to me? Is yes. the pot you know calling the kettle you know black? Why? Why. <laughs> is the yellow pot? He's calling much the blacker black. than me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Put this in I'm front of you. Because. Put this in front of your face. Because. With Tyrese, with Tyrese, let's talk about you it. You speak positivity, and, and I love it. A lot of people look up to you as positivity. Yeah. And I was one that did, and I still do. <laughs> he used to. <laughs> but then it called shame. But then, but then when I hear you mess up, I'm like, how? You tell me, envy, be good, be better. You tell the world. I ain't never heard Tyrese say he was perfect. I, I'm oh, not did. perfect. And one of the best things listen, you can listen. do is mess up and own up to the fact that That's you messed it. up. How do you avoid all these leg muscles out here? When the cleavage is right <laughs> and you sitting up trying to keep your focus, how do you do it? How do you do it? I'm active. L- listen, listen, let me just explain active. something. Dude, it's I'm real active. out here. Listen, listen. I sing to that because I want that. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't play on both sides. I'm right here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? So at the end of the day, I'm trying my best. Every day we're a work in progress. Now, guess what? When a relationship ends, sometimes it's not always about cheating. Sometimes that woman is in a relationship and she's mentally and spiritually, emotionally bored because her man don't know how to intrigue her. Mm-hmm. So she's like running around desperate just to have a conversation. So my man ain't cheating. But if if if, if it's going to stop me from being this bored, go get something else. Just come home and talk about it. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. It's all kind of reasons that relationships end. And you could find yourself saying, I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed that I was playing video games, wearing cartoon characters on my backpack, wearing <laughs> peppermint socks, caught up in cars, money, and materialistic mm-hmm. things, and my wife was at home suffering, and I didn't even know it. That's real. You could leave your relationship and be ashamed of that. So at the end of the day, there's all kind of, and guess what? Let's put this out there. F- that. Every time a relationship ends, it's not always the man. There's plenty of women out here doing shit that they're ashamed of. I had nothing to do with them 10 relationships that you was in before we got in a relationship. You didn't brought all of them heartbreaks, insecurities, issues, mental, emotional, and physical abuse into this brand new relationship. Now I'm on the receiving end of all of the shit that them 10 dudes and did to you. So you should be ashamed of yourself. Dave. Don't put it on me. Now, did I ask you a question? <laughs> he answered my question. But you my have, man. but you have, but you have broken a lot of hearts, as you said yourself. I have. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not proud of them. When will you but, break you your know, last heart? Since this is your last album, you should break one last heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlemagne. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm so sure. If I were to talk to your wife right there, she'll tell me. I keep telling them to put the seat down on the toilet. He don't listen. I keep telling him when he take his last dribble, pause. Don't have it on the top of the seat. Do it on the bottom of the seat. Oh, I'm telling you, it's like, listen, man. Here's the beautiful thing mm-hmm. about being a man and a woman. We're all a work in progress. Nobody's perfect, and and this is what I'm gonna talk you about. Kind of sounded like Caitlyn Jenner just a little bit. <laughs> it's just the way you spaced it. You was like, Shut this is the thing about being a man and a woman. <laughs> you, oh you, really? You just a little bit, Tyrese. Shut up. That's what you're doing. Shut up, man. You really? I swear to God, it's just about ratings right now. Just, he's about it really. The headline is about to say Tyrese impresses. I'm, right I'm, right I'm not doing this. I swear to God, I'm about to walk about this. <laughs> I'm not doing this. So anyway, as a man and a woman in the presence of, thank you, you appreciate it. Sometimes you realize that you're not perfect. We're a work in progress. My album is not for perfect people. Mm -hmm. I'm going into honest topics. I'm singing from the heart. I'm vulnerable. I'm honest. And here's the thing. It's not about album sales. It's not about being number one and I'm this and I'm that. That's for people in the industry to stroke that ego. All of the success around this Black Rose album is to benefit the state of R&B. It's to highlight something that 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 seems to be in the backseat. Right now, I'm saying this to the Grammys. I want to win this year. Mm. And I don't want to win just because I want to give, give, give a speech. I want to win because this is a real R&B album that deserves the Grammy. And I don't want to be in the pre-telecast. I don't want to give out my award before the actual Grammy start. I don't want to be on billboards as rappers and R&B singers promoting the Grammys. And then when you show up, they're giving trophies to everybody that wasn't on the billboards. 
straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Don't have all of us creating that momentum for people to tune in and then you giving out trophies there. But I think Steve Stout said that. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, it's time to, to re-spark real interest and have the energy to go in the right direction. And I'm not talking about black. I'm just saying in general, let's be more fair. Let's be real. Like I've already talked about it, but come on, man. I don't limit me. Don't limit my reach. Don't limit my fan base. Don't don't stop people from falling in love with these songs. And don't make me think that because I'm not singing house and techno and I'm not wearing tight ass pants and trying to be a crossover act specifically that I can't have my fans all across the board hearing my music. Like, come on, man, them days is over. Absolutely, you on, um, just change the subject a little bit, you on Empire season two coming up, they say. Yes, I'm coming to get my bottom lip back. <laughs> Tired of all these dudes kissing on Taraji. I'm, I'm not having it. Uh-oh, is it gonna be a regular role or? We'll see, I'm, we'll see. I definitely got, I'm not, I won't be visiting. I'm not just gonna come and do a scene or two and get up out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tyree changed characters. We can't minute, wait to boy. see that. Yeah. <laughs> the crazy thing, you, you were supposed to be on the first season. But I was. I was in dealing busy. with my custody situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, shout out to Lee Daniels, Danny Strong, Taraji, you know, all of the success that they have. I'm not one of them people that's jumping on the Empire train. Mm -hmm. They really wanted me to be on season one. I just couldn't do it, mm -hmm. fighting for my baby. And uh, I've also turned down like nine movies fighting for my daughter. You know, and that's what it is. When you're a dad and you committed to what's happening, sometimes projects that got big checks attached, you can't do it. Is she but enjoying I'm coming going back. On, on press runs with you and everything? Because I see you have her with you all the time when you're out and about. Oh, Does yeah. she enjoy that? My daughter loves it. She's uh, My daughter is my biggest fan, and I'm hers. I mean, listen, I just got, I just <laughs> got the best video ever, man. And um, I haven't even showed it to my daughter yet. She just turned eight, mm -hmm. and... Um, I just got the best video ever from Selena Gomez. Look at this. Oh. Happy birthday, Shayla. <laughs> I think that was terrible. Hi, I wish I could be there to give you a big hug. It's Selena. I'm uh, oh, She's right, going to be so hyped. My daughter is the biggest <laughs> Selena Gomez she's fan of all time. <laughs> like, my daughter be wanting to watch her documentaries. That's dope. There's only so many women out here that's keeping it classy and clean that your little girl could actually look up to. I'm telling you, if she hasn't seen this video yet, she's going to freak out. So what, you just sent Selena a text like, hey, man, send my daughter a video. Listen, I need you to, because my Absolutely. daughter's doing well in school. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? She just graduated. Mm -hmm. She's in first grade now, and she needs that positive reinforcement. So I'm like, look, say something about her being in school, being <laughs> focused in your video. Don't just send me a birthday shout. So if the video had kept going, she's going in. Help. Love, Selena. Now, I mean, now, you got your record label. What, what was it? Voltron, right? Voltron Records. So, so V. Bozeman. Yes. That Timberland artist, your artist, joint that's, that's venture. Timber, that's Timberland's artist. Okay. And I've been working with V to help her to finish her first solo album. Got you. So we you both from wide South Central LA, and I just, you know, I think she's a sweet, beautiful. She's dope. Yeah, I, I love her, man. She's sweet. I saw you at the BET Awards, and you're the first ever mayor of the BET Awards. How yeah. did that happen? Um, you know, Stephen Hill uh, and my man, uh, um, Oh, man, we got to edit this part. Hold on, hold on. Uh, damn, I, okay, yeah. My man, uh, my man, Stephen Hill, BET, Deborah Lee, as well as Paxton Baker, mm -hmm. um, asked me to be the mayor of the overall BET experience, and and I was just honored. You know, I'm from L.A., um, and it was five days of me just hosting and just making sure that everything was smooth. Now, I didn't know that they was going to have me doing that much work. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Damage. I was like, poor Tyrese out here. He got to yeah. do all this stuff. I mean, we talking about emails, late night conference calls. Certain certain people were supposed to perform and fell out, and we trying to find a replacement. I didn't know I actually had to work. I thought they were just going to use on. me on the red carpet <laughs> and chill out. Name, right? I thought I was going to be out there in them streets getting active. <laughs> and then yeah. I saw you and Janelle Monet had a run-in after. Yeah, she's so damn fine. Yeah. You I, like all my women, man. Really? Janelle Monet, Patty LaBelle. So you slow dance with Patty LaBelle. Yes, I've been wanting to suck a fart out Patty LaBelle, but <laughs> Janelle <laughs> Monet. Stop saying that because no. Patty LaBelle's son called him out for that. Patty LaBelle's son checked me when Definitely I was working for you. He, he was not having that. I'm like, bro, I can't. You can't be up mad at me because your mom's a milk. But <laughs> Janelle is the prettiest girl in the game. She is without question. Yeah, I love Janelle. I think uh, everybody knows that by now. When <laughs> you shot your shot, bro. I did. I gave it my best. It was it was a classic LeBron uh, lob in the air. And did I, it make it in? Did you get it in? 
Listen, you know what I love? The way she reacted, she put up the tweet when I seen her. I was I got caught in the back of the, the BET radio room and I ran into her and she was smiling. She said, I love you and I'm just so grateful. And it was like, wow, all of my friends were calling me. That was really, really beautiful. She handled it. It was classy. I, I wasn't sure. You get watch on it and be like, but yeah, all that's cool. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, nice. So what's happening? What's going on? But seriously. You know what I'm saying? What's good? What's good? I put this per I put this cologne on for you this morning. That's everything going. You know what? I, I you know, I did apologize to her because it may have, have, have created a bunch of unwanted attention. Um, but I meant every word I said. I think um Today is a bunch of pride and ego that stops a man from expressing himself because he doesn't want to look thirsty, he don't want to look like he's sweating and jogging. You know, people are quick to, like, diminish you trying to just give somebody love. I ain't getting caught up in that. I'm grown. Listen, my voice is deep. You give me 12 days, uh, I'll have a full beard. I'm not out here trying to drop, <laughs> twerk, keep up with nobody. I don't know nobody named Nay Nay. I'm grown. And I like it. I like being grown. Okay, so if you and Reverend, you and Reverend got your show coming on. Charlemagne got a full beard. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He does. Be grown. Are you, listen, uh, you and Reverend <laughs> got the show. Be. It's coming on own, right? The talk show, right? Yes. So would you give people advice that yes, yeah, shoot your shot on social media if you like a girl? Listen, I would say in general, don't let your pride and ego in this. He thirsty. I am thirsty. I want that. I there need that. Oh my gosh. If yes. I want that, I'm going to go for it. Obey if thirst. I see. <laughs> yes, exactly. I am thirsty. Yes. Come on, live up to the Sprite can, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you want that, go get go that. Go get it. Or, Don't let your husband walk by you because you got a job and you doing I'm I'm independent. I don't need you. I don't want you. I could do, but you can. Nobody. Don't independent your way into loneliness. <laughs> Period. And it, it doesn't mean because you're alone, you're lonely. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of women out here that become successful, start getting money, start doing their thing, and they use that as a weapon towards a man that may not have as much. That man may not have as much as you because you, you're successful and you're doing your thing, but nobody wants to be alone. And stop tearing the men down. You can, you can have a conversation with that man, and he becomes the next successful entrepreneur. Everything on an ego level is just whack. One thing I love about Envy straight up and down, and we ain't gonna go into that again, but this man made it really clear that I made some mistakes, but I know who that woman is. I know what this family is, and I love getting money, I love living and driving, what that is, but I am miserable and I am frustrated with the idea that something that I may have did and said might lose my wife. Right. Now that's right, that's how you fight to make love work. And I think right now, when it comes to pride and ego, that's the number one relationship killer. Okay? I don't need you. I'm cool. I'm getting money out here. You getting money, but you miserable as a mother. Mm. <laughs> okay? Woman, you want to go home to a poodle and a rabbit in your drawer, helping you to go to sleep every night? You replacing a man with a machine, a vibrator? Stop playing, man. There's a vibrator called a poodle? The rabbit, you A ass. rabbit. He said poodle to the dog. You going to a dog. Oh, the dog. Okay, okay. The dog okay. at the front door <laughs> like this. He's like, oh, I'm good <laughs> now. Come on, man. Guy, like All of you fellas <laughs> out here thinking that because you get money, you drive that, you live in that, that you don't need a woman? Come on, man. Listen, as much paper as I've been getting and getting, my girl's been gone. She moved. She's been gone like 10 months. I don't like going home without my girl there. I don't like it. I don't like it. I've been doing interviews trying to figure out what could I say and do to get her to come back. I'm ashamed. You want your girl back? I do. Wow. I do. Now, we got options out here. Yeah, but I that don't mean nothing. One. That don't mean nothing. The one that was living with him that he wrote the song about. I wrote this album about. The whole album. I don't like it. Now, hold on, my brother. I now, guess what? Back. You can be in a bed with a woman and still feel alone. That's what, yes. We, not you can definitely be with somebody and be lonelier with somebody that you don't want to be with. <laughs> Absolutely. Day. There is a feeling of still feeling alone even when you're physically with somebody. Mm -hmm. I thought you was dating tonight, Laven. Yo, Sh Charlemagne. Up, Charlemagne. Where you get that from, Charlemagne? She's ridiculous. On the blogs. Okay, I'm reading the blogs. My blogs bad. said you gay. All right, well. The, blo the blogs, right. the blogs say, say you light skin. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they say I'm light skin. Yeah, the blogs say you light skin. <laughs> the blogs say you look up to envy and you want your skin to look like him. <laughs> Are we going to believe lies. that? Yeah, that's definitely two, two bold face oh, lies. Look up, the, lie. look up to envy. <laughs> look up to the gay ones are lie too, but the, the one looking up to envy offends me more than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and wanting to be my, light skin. My thing is, oh, we're man. in a day and age 
where we're amongst the lost generation. We got so many people out here that are geniusly talented, but they have no sense of direction. We got a bunch of people uninspired, unmotivated, trying to figure out how do I get my life and my career to the next level without compromising my spirituality or my sexuality, without feeling like I got to go do something thirsty, a sex tape or this or that, just mm -hmm. to get some buzz and attention around my career. Right. And so I just want to put this out there because there's a million people watching this. Go get Black Rose. But um, <laughs> um, I want to just say this because it needs to be said. I believe that this is the season for good people to win. Mm. I believe that you can love God, uh, not be out here doing things with antics and this and that just to get some attention and love around your creativity and your career. And I also want to say this. It is not in everybody's cars to be famous. Mm -hmm. True indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not in every. There is a such thing as a billionaire that's on the train right now, and you don't even know who the hell he is, and he likes it. Mm -hmm. He likes or she likes just being successful, wealthy, having private planes, living this life and lifestyle, and not be famous. So many people are focused on fame. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Especially in this era. We come from the era of being just wanting to be successful. And the definition I, of famous is so different now. Oh, my God. Listen, I don't wake up every day trying to figure out how to be more famous. Mm -hmm. I'm the chairman and CEO of Voltron Entertainment. We got 43 projects that are in various different phases. I got billionaires, hedge funds, multimillionaires around the world all communicating and rocking, trying to figure out how to, way to bring these visions to life. And it ain't about antics, man. Listen, right now... The reason I want this album to be successful as well is because I want to be able to highlight love again. I, like, you're not even on the cover of a magazine unless you're about to file for divorce. Right. Like, I feel like positive, like, why can't you be married with a functioning relationship with your kids that are smart and educated, not out here being bullied or bullying and have some attention to be given to your marriage and your relationship? The devil has been busy trying to highlight negativity and not spread no love to positivity. So I'm just putting it out there. Like, I'm not preaching. I don't want nobody to be like, oh, here we go. He think he, listen, man, man, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Why you you got a job to do as a hater. I understand that you didn't create a username and a password so you could talk shit about everybody's life and tear them down. I got that. Do your job. Nobody wants to be unemployed. But it's very simple, man. There's a, th this is the season for good people to win. This is the season for people that wake up every day with good and positive intentions towards other people's lives to finally win. It's, it's confusing. Women are in school every day, single parent, working their ass off, getting on the bus and, and, and public transportation, trying to take care of their kids and survive. And they feel like, damn, what do I got to do? A sex tape to finally get me as an entrepreneur to get some attention on some of the shit I'm doing? Mm. I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I'm not frustrated, but I'm tired. And I feel like, again, everybody stay encouraged, stay on your path, and just know that as a positive person who has not allowed this game to compromise my spirituality or my sexuality in order for me to get on and keep winning, I'm going to keep rocking. And when I win, you winning. And I just want us to win. Statement: The statement is this. If we're trying to save R&B, it's not about album sales. I want to put this out there. If I wanted to make money, I wouldn't be in music. I'm getting real money mm -hmm. with all the other shit I'm doing. So for me to do music, I'm really trying to make a statement on behalf of R&B. Black Rose, my album, is number one in 13 countries. It's, it's number one on Google Play, Apple Music, iTunes, period. It's number one R&B top 200. Supporting this Black Rose album is you're helping me to make a statement. You tired of all this ratchet shit out here happening? Help me to make a statement because the music industry and executives are like robots. What's selling? Mm -hmm. Let's put our money into that. Let's put the R&B acts back on the radio, back in business. Let's get talented people off of the shelves and put them back on. They're reactive, that's all. That's it. So guess what? This win, you're going to see. It's like Avatar. Everybody start doing 3D movies after that movie was the biggest. That's what that's Black Rose is Avatar. Okay. Number one in the country right now. Well, we Period. appreciate you for joining us. I Get feel like I just read a Black week Rose. of Tyrese's Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations. Yeah, man. On the success. Man. And I, I hope you get your girl back.
I hope I do too. She's listening. I hope. Y'all are real popular, so I'm letting the world know. I want my girl back, well, and I don't mind stay. the world knowing. Huh? Sing stay right now. Well, you know, I got to sing other people's song because <laughs> my song ain't working right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's the I've been club. really trying, baby, <laughs> trying to hold back in feelings for so long. And if you feel like I feel, baby, come home. Oh, come home. I... I'm just saying. She might hear that. <laughs> she might hear that. Good morning.